Hey, what's going on folks? Bienvenue. My name is Wade and this is Sabine River Valley. It's the uh, end of March right now and the weather seems to have turned the corner. We are getting a lot of rain and things are starting to grow. The leaves have come out and uh, that means that there's going to be a lot of grass to cut here also. Um, I uh, am using a flail mower on my tractor here and um, it's actually an embankment flail mower, so it can swing out from behind my tractor to the side and it can angle up or down depending on whether I'm below a ditch bank or above it so that um, I don't have to get sideways with the tractor. makes it a little bit safer. But, um, you know, I've had a season to use it already and there's some things I've learned about it, some things that I'd like to try to make a little bit better with it, um, make it a little bit more comfortable to use. So uh, I've got an idea for that and um, I'm going to show you what I'm working with. So let's get to it. So this here is my mower. It's a Victory Implements EMHD 78, so embankment uh, flail mower. Um, she's a beast. She's about um, 2,000 pounds. You, you got to have a, a pretty good size tractor to control this thing. Um, but uh, with that comes a lot of hard movement with the hydraulics. So like I said, the, uh, the mower can swing out and go up and down and um, it can really shake you in the cab. It can really make you feel like the uh, tractor is about to uh, be thrown over on its side. So um, what I originally did here was I put some pilot valves um, in, the, uh, in the lines uh, in the middle of the flow here to kind of help me control that. But there's a couple of issues with them. Uh, one of them is that you can lock this down and get it perfect. You can get it absolutely perfect. But the vibrations of the tractor as you're using it um, will, will pull that out of... Uh, the locking mechanism there's a little pilot or a little um allen uh type screw here that you can really lock down and tighten and the vibrations will back that out um no matter how tight i get it in there i guess i could use some maybe blue loctite or something but i really don't want to do that i'd like to have control of it if it's going to be on there but um but it'll back that out and then it'll just swing hard again um out in up down uh, you know with the tilt and everything so my plan here is to actually replace these with some restrictor valves uh, my dealer uh, got me some and I'm gonna put those on here and we're gonna see if we can kind of tame this so I'm gonna give you a kind of look at what this looks like as it moves in and out so you can see what I'm talking about without you know any kind of restriction there and then we'll see if we can kind of tamp that down some so I'm sitting here in the tractor now. I'm going to try to get fancy with it and uh, show you a couple of different camera angles. Outside, um, I've got the uh, camera kind of on the side of the tractor. That, that flail motor is going to swing out, so you'll see it here momentarily. But I, I'm hoping to get maybe some of the tractor, the movement of the tractor as this happens. So uh, let's start it up and uh, see what she does. All right. So first off, I'm going to raise her up. So I believe this is the uh, in and out. So we'll see. Here we go. So you can see this. Anytime you want to use it, up or down, in or out. Now with the up and down motion, what I'm looking for is I want that to be smoother because when I get up to a ditch bank, 
I really would like a, a, a little bit finer control um, instead of trying to bump it just barely. You know, one of my controls here is a um, detent. And so, I, you know, I don't, I'm not getting, um, you know, smooth action with that. It, detent is either in or out. And you can just, whoa, you can see how You can see how hard that is. Um, I mean, that's just, that's just, I mean, I, oh. So anyway. And if you want to get just level with the ground, man, it is just, it's difficult to do. You know, this is all the way out. And now if I want to go down, see, I want to tilt that side down just a hair, and I can't. I'm pushing on it right now without going into detent. But if I go into detent, it drops too fast. You see how fast that went? And that was in and out. So, and coming back, it'll let me not do the detent so much, but I have to go into detent mode for it to go down. So, um... And, and with a flow mower with on an embankment, you could be under it or over it. So just because you could get one side smoother, you, you're not always just doing one side. You want a smoother motion in both directions. So I'm really hoping that this um, that this restrictor valve will help a little bit better. Now my plan is to actually remove the pilot uh, the pilot valves and just have a straight flow through there and then put the restrictor valves at the front of the hose connections um, and then to be able to plug those in. And I don't know if you just noticed there, but you know, I've got this flow control valve for the um, the three-point hitch when it going down, right? I mean, it doesn't really control it going up, but as it comes down, it controls the amount of flow that is allowed to move through there. And if you just noticed when I put that down, that was a super smooth action going down, and that's what I want on my on the flail mower itself, going in and out and tilting up and down. And so I plan on putting a diverter valve on each line. There's there's four hydraulic lines there. I, I plan on putting a diverter valve on each one to control that uh, in every direction and hopefully get it as smooth as uh, the three-point arms uh, were when they just went down. So what I'm working with here is a restrictor and it will you know, thread on to my hose on one end and then the coupler on the other side, which, you know, they, they're pretty large. But what it does is it restricts the flow down from this size here to this little pinhole there, if you can see that. So I'm actually restricting the flow down to a very, very small size, which is perfect. Now, I wouldn't want to use this on the tractor side because that means everything that I connect up to it, every implement would be restricted to this size. So I really want to put these on the hose for my implement. So it's just the implements that I want to restrict that flow to, um, you know, that that's that that they're the only ones that are restricted. So um, this was uh, this was provided by my dealer, and uh, I am uh, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to make a, a big difference on that. I'll show you what I was using. So this we've got a couple of them here. This is a needle valve, and this is from Summit. So if you can tell, this thing isn't in the greatest of shape. Um, 
I reached out to Summit to ask if they had like a stainless steel version of this or something that, you know, would hold up better in weather. And um, I got a response back, but it was it was basically a really quick one sentence line. No, that's all we have. So um, I just I don't. I don't think these are, I know some, it makes some really good products, but I don't know about this. Let me show you something else too. The top of this cap is plastic. How do I know that? Well, other than tapping on it and filling it because right here, I've lost one already. Um, and once that cap is broken, this thing I, if I pull it real tight, I can, it sort of moves, but once that cap is broken, um, this really is, is, isn't a, you know, it's not, it's not really that usable. Um, I mean, this is just, you know, it was on the back of a flail mower. It, it go, it, it's on a, it's on a big piece of heavy equipment. Um, and, you know, things are going to get thrown up. It's going to get beat up. I just think that, you know, I mean, if this was sitting inside of a compartment um, on the machinery, you know, in a bay, you know, in the engine bay or something, uh, you know, this, this probably wouldn't have happened. But um, so I don't know that I should say, you know, I don't know that I should, you know, really um, give Summit a hard time about that because, you know, maybe I'm using it for something they weren't expecting it to be used for. But on the other hand, people are going to use these in situations that I used it in. And these are about 50 bucks a piece, I believe. So I would think that they should be designed to to hold up and and obviously they're they're not they're not you know i mean i know it would take a lot of weathering to you know a, a lot of years you know for that to really cause any problems here that's just surface rust but i don't know about in this area right um i don't know if that surface rust could eat through that rust could eat through in this area or not i just know that it it doesn't look good um, I've got some really cheap Chinese stainless steel valves that have no rust on them. So um, that I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, so I, I would think that Summit, who is, you know, they, they want to be a leader in this, in the, you know, any kind of valve or, you know, market like that when you're dealing with hydraulics and stuff. I just think that they should make a... Um, an effort to make a better product than that. Um, with the, you know, with this, I would just say, Hey, you know, people are going to use these in different situations. And here's one right here where it did not hold up at all. So, um, anyway, so we're going to go to the restrictor valve and I've got um, I know that they fit that's one of the things right you get to make sure that your your connections fit so I've tried them out on one of the couplers and it definitely and the end hose and it definitely does fit so we'll I'm gonna put one on each side I've got four hoses I'm gonna put one on each side um, so we're gonna test this out and uh, see if it works so let's uh, go get this installed and see what kind of difference we see in the uh, movement of that uh, flail mower. So I've released the uh, pressure on these valves. So I'm gonna unhook them. I've already, I've already connected this one up. Uh, that was the one that I test fit to make sure that the actual, the restrictor fit my hose and the, um, the coupler. So uh, I'm gonna pull these others off and hopefully not spill too much oil 
I got, I got to tell you, um, I'm really interested in changing these to the uh, flat face connectors. Um, the uh, connect under pressure ones. I, I'm really thinking about that because it just makes all of this a whole lot easier and, um, you know, a lot less messy. It'd be a little expensive. The, the thing about the flat face connectors, though, is that you only need to change the male ends. The male is where the, uh, the pressure release valve is in the male coupler. So um, I could buy a less expensive um flat face coupler, uh, coupler for the female and just get the male and i think they're about 30 bucks a piece to get the males um so that's a that's an option if you wanted to do something like that If y'all remember in the uh, video that I did the flat face couplers, I went through all this, these steps to not spill any, and then when I took the actual coupler off, I spilled all of it. So I'm gonna try not to do that here. Yep, there it is. So that, between there, that was a lot that came out of that. One of the things that you want to make sure of when you do this is that um, you uh, check your hydraulic uh, fluid level um, afterwards because I've spilt a lot of fluid working on all of this. I don't know if it's actually needed, but I'm going to do it anyway for good measure. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, the Loctite Four, uh, 545 on this. Okay. Give it the good grunt tightness. I think that's part of the good tight process is the grunt. All right. Now we can connect this back. And move to the other ones. in there all this picked up all right well we've got them all connected back with restrictors so uh let's find out what this does you know i'm actually going to turn some air on this morning Cause it's a, it's a little warm. At least in the cab. Okay, let's see, uh, let's see how she does. Now, I don't have my uh, throttle up either right now, so we'll see if that makes a difference. There we go, that's 
That's a great speed right there. Oh man. Wow. Oh man, that is amazing. Well, let's let's throw up the throttle and check it out real quick. So I'll go up to PTO speed. All right, here we go. show you this again. This is D10. Okay, so I'm going to push it forward in the detent mode and look how slow it goes. I had no control in detent mode and that is, I mean that is, that is so much better in detent mode. When I say detent mode, right? Detent is a lock, right? So when I lock it in to detent, right now I've got my hands off and it's moving. When I lock it into detent, it's so much, so much smoother and a much better control. I mean that is that is night and day difference. Alright. So much of a difference. So I'm I'm super happy about this. The, the, these results. Um, I know that that was moving out slow. Um, I, I really think I could probably flip the tilt because I'm okay with the tilt moving out that slow. Um, so I might flip the tilt and the uh, extending uh, functions. So uh, that, that would be fine with me. I'll, I'll, I'll switch those out and see how that works. I got to tell you, though, um, I, I, you know, I like mechanical stuff because mechanical stuff tends to not break down as much. Um, maybe it's not that they don't break down as much, but it's, it's a lot easier for me to fix mechanical stuff if it does break, right? If it's um, if it's some type of um, chip or something that goes bad, you know, I, I have to go find that chip. It's not something that I can go uh, into my garage and you know pull out a, a piece of steel and you know start bending and welding and and making something that would work or fixing it or repairing it. So I I, I do like mechanical stuff, but. There is a place for non-mechanical parts, and I think this is actually one of those places. Um, it would be fantastic if my controls in here that I could reach down and I could adjust the um, the the flow rate in my cab for each implement I'm using. So, man, I would I would love if I if I had my handle right here and under each remote handle was a flow control knob, you know, similar to the flow control knob for the three point arms when they lower. And I know that's a little different, but, but still 
if we had a, you know, if we had our remote in here, our remote control arm, and then, you know, a valve or just a knob that would, you know, control something that would let, you know, close that flow and open it. Um, that would be, that would be great because like I said, I don't always want a restrictor in place. That's why I put it on the hoses specifically for the implement, not on the tractor side, but I don't want to buy, you know, those, those get, you know, those get expensive. And so I don't want to buy those every time I turn around for a new implement that um, I want that kind of control on. And like, you know, right here, even with that, even if I do go out and buy them, you know, I wish I could adjust that because I would definitely adjust that out. Now, it's a lot better than it was, but I would definitely adjust that out um, to where it would move out a little bit faster if I could. If I, if I was able to do that right here, I would do that right now. So um, I think there is a place for something like that. And, you know, if, you know, TYM, I know y'all watch my videos my all four or five of them. Um, but if, you know, if anybody's watching this, you know, and they're, you know, you, you, you have the ear of an engineer who's out there designing things like that. I would, I would really look into that. I don't know what it would cost to add that functionality into a tractor, but to have that kind of control over my implements, I'd pay a little bit more for that. So, um, you know, that's just, uh, you know, my, uh, my take on that, but, this, this definitely is a huge improvement. If, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but the, the tractor was not, it didn't feel like it was flinging the tractor around, right? While it was moving that. So um, it just, it felt really good. I had the control that I needed and I'm, I'm really excited to use this. So uh, restrictor valves, you know, sometimes they, uh, you know, they, they serve a really good purpose. And this is one of those. Well, I appreciate you watching. Um, you know, uh, if you if you like the video, you know, press like. I guess um, I, I've never asked anybody to do this, but like and subscribe. I guess um, I am trying to do more videos, and and I really enjoy doing them. Uh, I, I'm really having a lot of fun doing this. So, um, so you know, like and subscribe. I really appreciate you watching, and uh, leave a comment. You know, if you've got an idea about this, if you saw something. You didn't like you would change leave a comment please um i'm um i am open to all of that i'm i'm not an expert here um and so anybody with more expertise than me i i will definitely you know listen to what you have to say so well i guess this is it um so you know i'll see you next time lord willing and uh, it's, uh, I don't know if y'all will see this before or after, but it's Good Friday today. So, um, if y'all see this before Easter, you know, happy Easter and, um, just, uh, I hope y'all have a good one. Get out there and enjoy this, uh, this weather now that we're coming out of winter. And, uh, just, uh, I hope that I'll see y'all next time.